Training is the cornerstone to an active lifestyle, whether you're just trying to get fit or whether you're trying to take the high levels of sports performance. For both of those, we still want to make sure that you attain a healthy body, and mainly today, we're going to focus on the hip and on the knee and cranking it up a notch with levels three and four. Okay, the first thing we're going to go through is some of our movement prep, which is going to be a series of single leg exercises. It's going to incorporate flexibility, balance, we're also going to get a lot of your stability in there as well. It's going to be a certain level of strength. So let's go ahead and start off with just a forward lunge. Craig's going to take a big step out, keeping that knee behind the toe, put that left hand down. And this is how we're going to warm up here at Sports School for the hip and the knee prehab program. Craig's going to then push the hips tall, stretching out that high hamstring. He's going to dip his hips down and now fire from his glutes. Good. Pushing into the next stride. So again, we really want to open up this whole tissue. We want to activate it by turning it on, stretching out the hamstring, now driving tall from glute. Good. So it's one of the best warm-ups we can have to decrease your injury potential and improve your performance by really getting hip separation to improve your speed. Good. Now we're going to go through a series of actually working on a backward lunge with a twist. It's a little bit more advanced than we had on level one and two. We're going to get a big drop of the hips. His knee is off the ground. Craig's going to turn the shoulders, get a big reach, and now he's going to squeeze his cheek to release the muscles in the front of the hip, push himself back, develop some quad strength, a lot of good balance and stability here. He's really holding that. will help develop the joint-specific strength, balance in the ankle, and release that tight hip flexor. Big reach, hold it, firing the glute. Good. And then pushing back and rest. Great job. Good. Makes it look easy. It's going to require a little bit more balance than Craig actually showed right there. Now the next thing we're going to do is try to open up the inside of those hips with what we call a lateral lunge. So let's go ahead and step out to the side. Now you notice Craig's holding perfect pillar strength, which is the shoulder stability of the shoulders back and down, the core stability, and now the hip stability, keeping that inside leg straight. And go. Inside leg straight. Both feet are flat. Both toes are straight ahead. He's really doing a great job squatting with his hips. Notice the weights on his heels. Good. And he's bringing on back. So again, both feet flat, both feet straight ahead. Keep that right leg straight and always keeping perfect pillar strength. Shoulder, core, and hip. Excellent. Great job. A little bit of strength in there too. A lot of strength in there. And that's a great thing about movement preparation. It's really going to give you four things. One, it's going to increase your core temperature. Craig's starting to break a sweat here. A warm rubber band stretches better than a cold rubber band. The next thing we want to do is elongate that tissue actively like you just did. And if we can open it up actively, then it can contract through that new range of motion to gain the stability necessary and the strength necessary to that new range of motion. So that's really what we're trying to get at, and the greatest part of it is we're going to start to work and incorporate a lot of that balance and proprioception or getting your body the feedback mechanism necessary to make sure we can decrease the injury potential, but really necessary for high performance. Let's go ahead and go right into now a walking heel to Fanny, pushing tall off that glute. Now what we're going to look for here with Craig is perfect posture. He's going to fire ankle, knees, and hips and really extend tall, pushing the hip forward and pushing the hip tall, and then squeezing the off cheek to make sure that we get a great stretch through the front of this leg right there. Good. So again, this is going to help stabilize the knee, stabilize the hip, and stretch out the hip. So that's a walking heel to glute. Let's go ahead and go with the leg cradle next. Okay, now you'll notice that Craig brings that leg up. We want that parallel to the floor. He's held great posture right here. He's going to fire off the back side of this glute tall. Fire out the back side of the glute tall. Fire out the back side of the glute tall. And again, look at the balance he has, the ankle, knee, and hip, getting all three parts of those body to work well together. Great job. Where'd you feel that stretch? Uh, lateral, lateral glute complex, lateral hip. Good. Now that's just a progression on some of the other exercises, but you'll see we'll start to take the flexibility and incorporate it right in with all the stability and the strength necessary to do that. All right, we're going to go with the next one, a little bit more advanced of a drop lunge. We're going to try to stretch out the muscles of the outer thigh by dropping this hip back. Now we're going to reach back by turning his hips. He's going to square up, hold posture, and then he's going to push off that front leg. He's going to drop the left leg again, 
square the hips up. He's keeping all the weight on this front leg here, stretching out the calf, strengthening the knee, and definitely strengthening out the hip out in this lateral aspect all the way through there, which is a big component to knee and hip tightness. Good. Excellent. Let's go ahead and take it back. What are you really focusing on here, Craig? I'm just really trying to sit back and keep my weight going back through my hips and not forward into my knees. Okay. So really protect that joint and feel a big stretch right back through my lateral hip. And notice how you're still doing a great job of keeping that knee back behind the toe. Good. So that's gonna help the specific strength and balance. Great work. It's a good stretch for out there. Yeah, I'm opened up. Good, good. All right, the last one I'm gonna do is gonna go after that hamstring and the calf and the ankle. Gonna get that belly button drawn in. We're gonna take it right out in the hand walks. And we'll work that out for a few reps here. Good, now Craig, as he goes out, stabilizes the shoulder, locks in the abs, the legs are straight, and then they're going to cock and extend all the way up and through. Good, and then we'll walk the hands right back out. That's the way, tummy's tight. Good, and we're walking it back up and through. That's the way. Let's go one more rep. It's gonna open up all the hamstrings, calves, strengthen his core and his shoulder stability. But we really wanna make sure that we can get this area opened up as those calves will cross and the hamstrings cross across all those joints that we need to protect. Great job. Okay, feel warm? Yeah. I still feel pretty good. I'm warm. Hey, listen, that's a great little 10 minute warm up to make sure we can decrease your injury potential, but that's really gonna improve your performance by up to 20% by actively getting that tissue so we can still be real elastic as we move forward. Let's go ahead and slide right back up here. We're gonna go next with what we call a squat. We're gonna just get you down as far as you can. I'm gonna have you pull your hips in so you get your hips way forward and pull your chest up to loosen up all the hip joint. They're gonna have you signal a touchdown and stand back up from the glutes. Good, squat down. Pull those hips forward, big chest up. Good, that's the way, reach the hands up and then stand right back up. Okay, now you notice Craig's gonna reach down. Now when you get in this bottom position, he's really pulling the chest tall, he's pulling his pelvis forward, his tummy's tight, and he's gonna reach up out of the lats and squat out of his glutes. One of our good friends, Greg Cook, really spends a lot of time trying to use some simple solutions as well. And by firing all the shoulders, puts you in a good squat position, teaches you how to come in. Great job, you feeling that, Craig? Oh yeah. What do you feel down here at the bottom? Oh, just a lot of mobility through my hips. Okay. But at the same time, you can't help but not use those glutes to stand up. Good. And as we talked about earlier, one of the main things that we have to have to take it up at level three and four to help decrease that injury potential is to start to have the glutes do the work so that I don't have to rely on the knee and the recruitment patterns of the quad. We really want to rely on the hamstrings and the, or the uh, hamstrings and the glutes to be able to help stabilize the hip and the knee. Great job. Great job. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on, again, we talked about in level one and level two, our ability of our knee to rotate out and to rotate in, which is really what the ACL helps to do too and controlling rotation of that joint. So we wanna make sure that we address that. We've done it in isolation by coming in and out almost like windshield wipers. Now we're gonna do it with our foot on the ground, stabilizing in the weight. So I'm just gonna simply hold this for Craig. You can just wrap it around a door handle what Craig's gonna do is, you notice he's sitting his hips back. We need to work on his grip strength just a little bit. He's sitting his hips back, stabilizing on the knee, and he's just gonna roll that back and forth. Now where you're gonna start to feel that is right up there on that right glute and the knee, and rest. Feel that? Oh yeah, you know, the knee joint is a hinge joint. People think of it as a hinge joint, just operating one plane, but there's actually some rotation to it, and you can really start to feel that knee rotating just really small little ticks in there. And the better job Craig does of not showing that motion, the more muscles he's actually working to help stabilize that joint. And that's a big key to help dispersing the forces applied to the knee and the hip. Let's do the other leg. Good, and again, you can put that right on the door. Nice, great job. And again, now look at his shoulders through his core, through his hip, that pillar strength is staying stable. Good, and rest, great job. So it's really important, regardless of the activity, that we're really holding great pillar strength 
Again, shoulder blades are backing down, his tummy is tight, and he's stabilizing that hip as he's going through dynamic motion. Great job. Are we ready to get to work yet? I'm pretty warm. You think so? Yeah. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. What we're gonna do next is just to work on, where a lot of injuries occur and also in performance enhancement, but we wanna to start to look at how we decelerate the leg and also add in that bounce. So what we're gonna to try to do is take all these activities we've been doing on one leg, and it's really important that on that last exercise, Craig was balancing. We've worked on balance, we've incorporated it in dynamically throughout these levels of the program, but we need to continue to focus on that all the time, even during rest breaks at practice or just at home, all the way into just brushing your teeth on one leg. Let's go ahead and just go through a nice push out, stabilize, push back, and stabilize. Good. Now you notice Craig's posture, has got great pillar strength, and he's really, when he stops out here, it's actually coming from bending at the hip, not the knee driving forward. Let's go one more rep here. Good. And then pushing back and rest. So it's a great exercise to progress to. The better you get at it, the greater the distance you can have. Craig, let's turn sideways this time and do the same activity. Good, and push and stabilize and drive back and stabilize. Now you notice Craig's doing a great dynamic job of pushing, keeping that knee over the toe, stabilizing in this hip, and pushing back. Now remember from level one and two, we were just trying to get that hip to move. Now we're actually using it to dissipate all the forces and protect the knee. Good, and then land and stabilize. So a lot of balance and stability, as well as incorporating that strength. How'd you feel that? Good, I mean, it's really, the key here is to really think about almost collapsing down through the ground through that hip and taking all that stress away from the knee. If I do it improperly, you'll see I just kind of land stiff-legged. It's kind of a loud kind of smack on the ground. And I want to be super, super, super quiet as that foot hits the ground, taking everything through that hip. One of our favorite analogies here at sports school is that in order to decelerate like you do in your car to hit the brakes, that's equivalent to bend. And in order to accelerate, we need to be able to hit the gas pedal that's what we want to extend. And you're gonna to have to stabilize in between those. So again, to hit the brakes is to bend, to extend is to stabilize, or to accelerate. So we wanna think about as you drive your car, if you're hitting the brakes, thinking about bending in your body. Is I wanna accelerate, that is extending out of your body. And those are really important concepts here at Sports School. Great job. Okay, now I'm gonna have you do one where you hit and you bounce right back, just real quick. Good, hit, good, and stick it. Back, stick it, great job. And rest, no switch sides. Good, stick it, stabilize, good. Stick it, stabilize, well done. And stick it, stabilize, and rest. Good job. Okay, now what's good to go front to back really translates into sport to going from side to side. So we need to learn how to stabilize. As I come into a plant and cut, there's a lot of things that can happen at the knee, and most of the things that occur at the knee, as Craig said, happen with rotation. So now we're gonna add a little bit more of this rotational force, and then come back and stabilize. So Craig's gonna work over on this left side, we're gonna have him take a real small jump and just stabilize on his right side. Mechanics stay exactly the same. Short back's flat. Tummy's tight, his hips back, knee over his toe, and he's gonna push over and balance and stabilize. Notice how he bends from the waist. Good. Right here, bending from the hips. Good, perfect posture. And that's able to, good, great job. One more time, take it over. Great job, and rest. Now in order for Craig to hit the brakes, you've gotta have good brakes on the car too. You just can't hit the pedal. And that good brakes comes from strength and some of the elastic strength or your ability to not just produce strength this way, but actually produce strength this way. So we wanna make sure that as Craig hits that, the muscle's lengthening. He's gotta be strong enough to withstand that. So that's why it's never an issue to be too strong. We always have to continue to increase the strength pound for pound. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is just a little bit of a rapid response. You can go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Yep. Good. Good. 
Notice how Craig's being quick off the right and now holding on the left. Quick off the right, holding on the left. Okay, now one of the things you'll notice that Craig did was he really worked well on keeping that toe up and that's how I want the foot to interact with the ground so I can push off. The toe is landing down, that's where my heel gives and there's greater potential for ankle injury, but we also don't, like a basketball, capture the energy from the ground to push off. On a basketball, I want it to dribble, I push down a little harder and it bounces right back up. If I, if I land like this, I'm gonna be tuning into the foot and ankle pain episode. <laughs> yes, you will be. All right, now let's go ahead and just go one small quick side to side. Good. Notice the hips are back, his tummy's tight. He's doing a great job of transferring force and rest. Now, even though that was quick, every time his foot hit the ground, there was a, the body has to instantly stabilize it to be able to return it. And that's a critical element. Just because it's happening fast doesn't mean that those same processes are not happening that they did when they were slow. Slow is gonna ultimately equal fast and make that better. Great job, Craig. Okay, now to finish this up, we really need to finish up on some of our strength. So one of our exercises that we're gonna do today is really gonna be a split squat. So first of all, we can just use the body weight to step out, holding this perfect posture. Now, a lot of these exercises we did with movement preparation, Craig's gonna keep this knee back behind the toe and then drop this back knee so it's infinitely close to the ground. Notice the nice upright posture he has and pushing that hip forward, which is gonna give him a slight stretch. And working from the front side, he's keeping that knee back behind the toe. Good, so this is gonna cause him a lot to stabilize back and forth so that he doesn't lose his balance or have me push him over. Good, excellent, Let's switch legs. Now what we can do to start to progress that is we have fancy weights here at sports school. These are just nice dumbbells. You can use the same thing of a standard dumbbell or whatever else you have around the house, including if you have laundry detergent, that works great too. We encourage a lot of you to actually use that, especially after you get done sweating from this workout. Good. And Craig's staying that knee behind the toe. Now understand that because he's working his hips here, he's also working in those hips to stabilize going back and forth. Good. And rest. So this is one of the best exercises that we can do, and we can actually progress that exercise with taking our back foot and putting it on a bench later on. We'll share that with you later. Okay, now the last exercise we're gonna have is what we call a physio ball leg curl. Craig's going to take a physio ball, he's going to put his heels right up on that ball, he's going to really make sure now that we have this ball is going to increase the stabilization and proprioception so now he's going to require him to get more lateral stability and a little bit greater range of motion here than the foam roll. So Craig's going to get a straight line between his ankles, his knees, his hips and his shoulders locking in his abs, firing the glutes tall. Good, so that's gonna help protect that hip. Now we're gonna keep the toes dorsiflexed because this calf will work like a second hamstring and he's simply gonna keep the hips tall and curl the ball in. Good, that's it. Good, all the way out, that's the way. Now at home, you may have to have yourself and just make sure that those glutes are turned on the whole time, they should be rock hard. And you'll notice Craig's doing a great job of getting really long. Now if Craig does a poor job, he's dropping the hips down and if you don't see a straight line between your knee, your hip, and your shoulder, then we're not doing it properly. Good. Well done, Craig. And rest. Well done. Okay, now if we're gonna take one progression off of this, what we can have Craig do is to work on his eccentric hamstring strength is to take that ball all the way up top and the hips tall, and he's gonna curl it in and let it out with one leg. Good, and then put the other foot back on bring it up and work out to one leg. Notice that leg is still staying nice, the hip is staying nice and tall. He's letting it out. One more time, the hip is tall and he's letting that out and rest, great job. And that's the next level to be able to take up that glute and the hamstring strength that'll be really important to high levels of performance. Excellent. Craig, you did a great job. Thanks. Feel like you had a workout? Yeah, my knee feels good. <laughs> Does it feel good? Absolutely. Excellent. And that's that part of it. Our goal is to try to provide you a simple solution to make sure that we can not only just protect your hip and your knee from injury, but also help you to improve your performance. We'll see you at the next level, a sports school prehab for the hip and knee. Welcome to the final level of our sports school prehab for the hip and the knee. Craig, it's good to have you. Great to be here. Good, we're gonna try to crank you up one more notch right now. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with movement preparation. 
and we're gonna try to go right through this workout. Craig's gonna get warmed up here. Let's take a big step out. Good. He's gonna put that hand down. We're gonna roll right from one to the next. Again, it's gonna open up, again, the world's greatest stretch. Big stretch of the hips. Open up the glutes, open up the hamstring, dropping and then firing out of the glute. We're just gonna roll from one to the next because our time is really valuable. Good, and reach. Okay, let's go ahead and go backward lunge with a twist and open up that whole hip flexor. Good, Craig's gonna drop down, keeping the knee infinitely close, big twist. He's gonna drop it down, rotate, squeeze that cheek, big twist. Drop that down, big rotation, good. And one more time, let's go ahead and bring it back with walking heel to fanny, pushing tall out of the ankle, knee and hip, and push tall, good. Notice Craig's trying to really push tall out of his whole body, good out of his ankle, his knees, and his hips, always keeping perfect pillar strength, and also stretching out this muscle in the front by activating the glute behind. Excellent, let's go ahead and go back with lateral lunge. Good, sitting those hips back and down. Notice Craig will keep both feet flat, this leg straight. Again, it's gonna free up all the inside parts of his legs, build up some basic strength, and turn on all the systems for his balance. Good, and let's bring it on back. Excellent, both toes straight ahead, both feet flat. Perfect pillar strength, perfect posture. Straight leg, good. Great level of the hips. And rest. Now Craig will take it back with leg cradle, so we focus again on pillar strength and a lot of hip, ankle, and knee stability. Really firing tall again. Think about Craig pushing tall right to the top of his head. Again, ankle, knee, and hip to be able to extend that. And also stretching out all the glutes in here. And we can do that all while gaining some balance, so maximizing your time. Let's go ahead and go with drop lunge next. Craig's gonna turn his hips, drop them behind, square up, keep perfect posture, and notice that he's sitting the hips back and down, so his knee stays behind his toe. Good, now let's bring it on back. Keep the right leg behind the whole time. And turn, square up, and sit back, good. Turn it, square up, sit back, perfect. And you notice how he's keeping all the weight on this front leg and right back here on this heel, and that's perfect. Great job. Okay, now we're gonna go with our hand walks. Let's take it all the way out, drawing in the abs so that they're flat across the front of the pelvis. Shoulders are stabilized, legs are straight, stretching out the calves, the hamstrings, and the glutes, and working our way back out. It's also, again, a great strengthener for the shoulders and for the core. Then by pulling together with the muscles on the front, he's stretching out the muscles on the back. Great job, one more time. So again, with this exercise and this warm-up, this series will help to create about 17 to 19% more power and elasticity, as well as to a lot of balance and stability. Let's finish that up with an inverted toe touch, keeping the whole body in line, stretching out that hamstring and working on that balance. Excellent. Good. Craig's doing a great job of keeping that hip tall and a straight line from his ear right down to his ankle. Good. Great job. And rest. Feel like you're ready to go? I haven't been talking much. I'm getting warm. <laughs> That's what we really want to have with movement preparation. You want to be able to take your muscle and do four things. You want to warm it up so that the warm rubber band stretches better than a cold rubber band, which is just like your muscle. You want to elongate the tissue actively, just like you're going to compete. Do you ever watch the Discovery Channel? Sure do. You ever seen a cheetah with a pulled muscle? So I have. You ever seen cheetahs sitting around static stretching? Nope. Okay, they get up, they stretch, they move, they activate, and they're off ready to go. And that's essentially what movement prep is. So we also get a lot of ankle, knee, and hip stabilization, activation, and strengthening throughout that whole thing. It's gonna help you achieve your performance goals. All right, next we're gonna work into a little bit of what we call elasticity. Craig, I'm gonna have you put your finger right down in your thigh. I'm gonna have you lift up your middle finger and try to get as much power and force as possible. Okay, and relax that. Now I want you to do is take that finger and just pull it up and notice how it snaps back down. A lot more powerful and this takes no energy, okay? Compared to this, it takes a lot of energy and we get very little force. We're gonna work on some exercises right now to add that motor ability to any different type of joint in your body. Okay. Whether it's front to back or whether it's in rotation, everything in our body, when I set those hips back, that finger's on stretch, or that muscle's on stretch and wants to snap back, storing energy and releasing it. Bending to decelerate, extending to accelerate. 
It's gonna be a big goal of this next part. I'm gonna have you come right up here, Craig. We're gonna imagine that we have our feet just outside of our hips and you have a little line on each side. I'm simply gonna have your whole posture lock in your abs. We're gonna move over about three inches to your right, three inches to your left, to your right, to your left, and notice my perfect stability and posture stays right between my base of support. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go with this nice and easy. Just get your rhythm and go. That's the way. Good, now notice your knees are staying right over your toes, doing a great job keeping your hip backs, good posture, and rest. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we really wanna help develop some of this protection so that when your foot rapidly hits the ground and goes, that it's used to dynamically stabilizing and pushing away. So we're gonna do this pretty quick, but I'm only gonna ask you to do this for about five seconds to start off with, so go hard. Okay, I thought okay. that was too easy. Yeah, it was a little too easy. And go, that's the way. Good, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up and rest, great job. Now if you start to get in that and you feel like you're losing control, just stop right away. All right, and that's what we wanna do is if you can't hold that quality that long, then shut it down because these exercises are all about quality. Doesn't matter how long you do it, just matters how well you do it. Well done, catch your rest. Okay, now we're gonna start to look at is we're gonna take that same set, we're gonna do it just a little bit better. Tummy's gonna be tight, good posture, and go, a little quicker. That's the way. Now great posture, notice those knees are staying over the toes, keeping the feet apart, and rest. Great job. So now these are almost all the exercise progressions and abilities through level one, two, three, and we're expressing it in a different way in level four with a lot more dynamic type of activity, and that's what we want to have to help improve your performance and decrease your injury potential. Excellent. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to think about our body like a wheel. We're going to hold this great pillar of strength. And if you've ever gone to a hotel room that has that TV sitting on the, the counter, but you can rotate it all different parts of the room, we want to put that right in between your torso here. We want to rotate your hip forward, rotate the hip back, rotate forward, rotate back. And every time we stretch through here, we're going to store that energy. The reason I bring that up and how it's important to that hip is the fact that if I can start to learn to move from the hub of my wheel, then all the spokes are gonna go around a lot faster and I can also, again, go to that concept that I'm in the preparation and be able to use my glute to decelerate. Let's try those base rotations. Just imagine a line on your feet. Let's go real slow, put one hip in front and then the other hip in front. Good, in front and in front, good. That's perfect, and rest. Now you're doing a great job. If you have poor posture, your hips are rolled underneath, you're already gonna be in a potential for here and not being able to recruit our glutes. So we'll really hold that posture locked in and we're just gonna turn side to side for about four to six seconds. And go. That's the way, great job. And time. Great work. Now we've done different types of activities and that's gonna again take every one of them and kind of bring them in together to make sure we can have that happen a split second like you may need at sport. Okay, the next thing we're gonna start to do is go one foot. And if we look at this, we've been doing a lot of things with balance all since level one. We've been doing different incorporations with balance here. We've done different types of squatting with balance. Now what we're gonna start to do is add a little bit of dynamic nature with balance. Tummy's gonna be tight. I'm gonna try to keep my posture. And remember when we talk about pillar strength, shoulder blades back and down, tummy tight, that hip has to be stabilized, and this is really important here. I don't want my hip to sit out. I wanna to try to get my hip underneath me, and we're gonna to go to one foot, we're gonna move over the line and bounce, back over the line and bounce. Over the line and bounce, back in line and bounce. Stay slightly bent with the hip back so we can stabilize through your hip. Let's go ahead and do that nice and slow. Good, and go. Stick it, good. Let's go ahead and do a few with you, just get a pause. And pause, pause. I wanna see you master that, and rest. Where do you feel that? Right up in that yep. hip? Yep. And that's a lot of times, if I don't see your hip move out, that means you're doing a great job of actually using the muscle here and here to stabilize that. Now let's do it quick. Quick as we can, right over that line. And go. That's it, back and forth. Again, we're getting the ankle, we're getting the knee, and we're getting the hip, and time. Great job. Now in order for Craig to be able to do that, he's really got to work hard at stabilizing through here, because the only thing that's really hitting the ground as I go over and back is actually this stable pelvis and that's what's so great about having this good pillar strength to move back and forth from. Nice job. You know, so important as you start coming back from knee pain and hip pain to start thinking about delivering a force through the ground again because that's when you get back on the field and you move from point A to point B is depending on how much force 
you're able to deliver in the ground. And another thing that I really like to do that is a lot of skipping stuff as well. That's great. I think we should probably share some skips right now. And I think that's the main element too, that you can get great balance and stability. You might even get some strength back. But this elasticity component brings all those elements together. And that's really what you're gonna face once you step back on from whether it's a novice or a professional athlete to getting integrated back into your sport or just the activities that you enjoy. Some of the things that I really like to go through with some of the skipping, it's just keeping that belly button drawn in a little forward lean and just working on skipping right through the ankles, okay? Again, single leg activity, and a skip is when we have both feet hit the ground. You notice Craig's response is real crisp. It's exactly what we want. It's the same kind of interaction that we just had in the rapid response, but now I'm putting a force through and moving. And that's a big thing to have. The better I can store energy and release it, the better of an athlete, regardless of what level you're gonna be, that you're gonna become. Okay, now let's go ahead and go with an ankle bound. And a bound is when we go right to left, back and forth, and propel your body. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. It's great pillar strength, legs remain straight, just working right through the ankles, good. You know, a lot of times you'll see people kind of lean back and do almost like a straight leg bound, and we want to really emphasize leaning forward and pushing behind you with those ankles. And again, every time that foot hits the ground, it sends that elasticity up and through the body to be able to store it and release it, that's really important. Now as we start that, and we talk a lot about how those forces hit the ground, if you think about dribbling a ball, if you want a ball to do a faster dribble, I do what? Push down more. Push down Push a little bit harder. harder. So a lot of us think though that what we're supposed to do in order to run faster is to pick our knees up more, but we're gonna work on a real small drill, and I want you to start real small, of getting the toe up, the knee up in front, through a stable core, and pushing through the ground, just to be nice and light, and then gradually building that range of motion up so we're stabilizing and pushing through all your hips and knees and ankles. Good. Notice Craig, the level of Craig's hips from the shoulder to his hip, that is not changing. It's working everything below the knee. Good. That's the way. Perfect, Craig. Perfect. And rest. Okay, now, the other thing with these drills that we just did with the skipping, and with some of the things of over the line drills, and some of those four to six seconds, well that's an energy system or conditioning level itself. Mm -hmm. And to be able to protect yourself from your knee and your ankle and your knee injury and your hip injury, we've gotta make sure that we can actually use that energy system because that's gonna get fatigued, and which is a lot different than going out and running around a track. Right. So we wanna make sure that we really work on that. It's all complimentary. Okay, that's the last part of the skipping activities that we're gonna go through right now. It's just we're gonna go through the legs just nice and straight and just try to pull back, just like when we did those glute bridging, glute bridging, really stabilize in the torso and try to pull that heel back and down. Good, now notice the legs straight, the toes up toward the shin, and all the movement's coming from the core of the body and rest. Now when we talk about the core of the body, Craig is not moving his leg from down here, he's moving this long lever from up here at the glute and really pulling down. That's why we've developed the hamstrings and glutes in such a way. It's a really nice job of skipping. Thanks. Hey, skipping's an art. It's a lost art. We should have done it as we're growing up. But the more time that people spend in front of the TV, the less time that we're out playing and the less time that we're getting those types of skills. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna work into a lateral bound now. And this lateral bound is something we started in level three, but now we're gonna progress it up. And I want you to push, again, sitting the hips back and down. I wanna bend, and then I wanna extend and get as much distance as we can. Then I want you to land and stick it and just hold that stabil stabilization. That's it, great job. Good posture. Now notice Craig's absorbing with the hip. Again, almost falling into it, absorbing with the hip. The knee is staying behind the toes, firing from the glute. Good, Craig. And again, exaggerated movements. And rest. Great job. Now when you take Craig and his lateral movement up and over, he's really having to hit and stabilize in this whole hip caving all the way out. So that strength that he's worked on through levels one, two, and three are really helping to drive him in and stick that leg, putting him in a position to be explosive off the other side. Okay, what we're gonna work on next, I want you to stay on that left side. We're gonna be quick off the right and then just hold the left and just do two reps for me. Get your toe up toward your shin, good and push 
and hold. Excellent job. Now he's going to be real quick on the right side. And quick and hold. Excellent job. Now what Craig's having to do is take that force as he lands and those hips go higher. He's landing, these muscles are lengthening or hitting the brakes in your car, decelerating and then rapidly turning back around. And that's what we need to really have in sports performance as well as just start to really progress that hip to withstand whatever else you may, whether it be skiing, recreational tennis, or even golf as we start to finish through some of the dynamic actions of that swing into that hip. And that's important because you, when you talked about in the other levels, most of the injuries, most of the ligament injuries in the knee, particularly the ACL, comes in what they call a non-contact deceleration, or in words that we understand, changing direction. So if I can be stable dynamically through this controlled drill, when I get back on the field, I'll be able to run and cut and change direction on a dime without even thinking about it. I'd like to see that. So would I. Excellent. Well, you know, we have our Thanksgiving Bowl coming up, and we'll have to, uh, we'll have to work on that sometime. My team's already deep in training. I know. It's a year-round progress here at Sports School. All right, now it's going to go the last progression, just quick off both sides. And that'll be our last one for this lateral bound series. Good and quick. That's it. Great job, Craig, and rest. Good. Now what Craig got to right there is quick off both sides, again, dynamically stabilizing. Just because he wasn't on the ground long doesn't mean that all these activities we built up from since then haven't and aren't working every time that foot's the ground like that. The other thing that you notice is Craig has a high level of strength per pound of body weight, and that's really important for us. And we're going to show you one more drill to do that. Craig, the next activity we're going to do, you did in the last progression, level three, you started to get stronger by doing some of the activities of coming through your lunge progression. You added weight, and then we even talked about the opportunity, if you want to make it even more difficult, to go back to body weight and just using that back foot up on the bench to get a little more depth and to really work on the stretch in the back leg, keep the knee over the toe. But what we want to do now is we're going to progress that into almost more of a speed strength, if you want to think about that, or power. I'm going to have you get in that lunge position. I'm going to have you keep this leg in front the whole time. You're going to bend down. You're going to take your arms up and block and try to fire through the glute. Get up and then stick it, just like this, and stick. And up, then stick. Up, and stick, and rest. Great job. Thanks. So now as Craig starts to take that, he's not only just used the weight of external resistance, now he's using gravity and trying to add speed into it. And the speed element of training is critical to improving performance and definitely decrease the injury potential of that knee and that hip. It's a really great job. Now, we can take that next level and we can actually progress that into three jumps in a row. And what I want to do now is if you watch Craig, he's going to stabilize through his knee, he's going to store the energy and release it just like a spring. Let's hit three of those in a row. One, two, and rest. Perfect. Now, the reason Craig was able to do that is that he progressed from the very first set where every time he landed, he could stick it perfectly. He mastered that progression, then he could go to the next. Mastery is really important before you try to go to the next progression. If you stick with us and you know that you watch our athletes, we've had athletes for some up to 10 years, and they continue to gradually progress through exercises and mastery, you'll always be challenged here at sports school. Good. Nice job. Thanks. Okay, in order to take on those levels of performance, we need to continue to support it with a strong foundation of strength. And that strong foundation of strength, we got into just a little bit in the previous levels. Now in all sports school curriculum, we really want to make sure that we have that interaction between all the different levels. You're going to be complemented through some of these exercises, through some of our different phased programs that will continue to progress you through more of a multidisciplinary approach through your total body, working on your core and your pillar strength, working on your shoulder strength, your total body strength. So I encourage you to check out some of those other sites and any of the other opportunities, whether it be for the tight muscles, the ankles, the shoulders, and the other things that we have. Now, we went over last time about step ups, and step ups are great exercise. They make you keep that knee over the toe, force you to use the glute. You're going to keep that back leg straight. And notice Craig doesn't push off the down leg, but just off the top leg. Great posture, really firing from glute. Let's go ahead and see that on the other side. Good, and hips tall, just pushing tall. Good, and pushing tall, perfect. So now that's a great activity right there, is what we call the step up. Now Craig, you notice, has his thigh about parallel, and we can continue to take that up higher and higher. 
Now once we feel like we've mastered that, he has good balance and stability, he's added some weight to that, we're gonna go back to a body weight exercise and not even let this leg hit. We call this a balanced squat. Craig's gonna keep his knee as best he can right over that toe. Again, everything sits back with the hips back and down. Great, good. And Craig, go ahead and rest and let's see that from the side. Good. So what you're gonna notice is Craig's gonna keep that knee right back behind the toe. He's gonna sit back and go. Now I wanna really focus here on the hips as they sit back and down and then bring it back up. Now Craig isn't using any balance devices or anything else. He's really having to stabilize everything from the hip. Now I'd like to say this is a far cry from level one where we're just trying to get that hip you know, joint and capsule just moving and trying to get that knee stabilized and supported so it wasn't diving all over the place. We've gone through elasticity. Now we're up to taking your body weight on and being able to take it in an exercise that you can do regardless of whether you're traveling or whether you're at home. You can always find a step or a ledge to do an activity like this. So I think it's a neat progression to be able to go through. Yeah, I think once you get on your plan, you see with sports school, we always have a progression to go to the next level. Agreed. It seems like only yesterday I was on the small box. I remember that day well. <laughs> I remember that day well. All right, now that we've worked on some of these glutes, the quads, up to the calves, holding that posture, the next exercise that has a lot of bang for a buck is what we call a Romanian deadlift or an RDL. Now we don't know where some of these names come from, but we're gonna use it anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this back real straight. Now again, shoulders, the core, shoulder blades are back and down. The belly is going to be drawn even with the front of the pelvis, and Craig's gonna make sure that we keep the legs just slightly unlocked. The weight will remain back on Craig's heels, and he's gonna set the hips up and back, making sure that we keep a nice arch right here on this low back, just like that. Shoulder blades are together, and he's gonna pull up. This should be very similar to bowing to the crowd and then coming back up. Now, Craig, do you feel a stretch back here in your hamstrings? Oh, yeah. Good. So what we're trying to do, and that really has to do with how well Craig is tilting that pelvis up and then bringing it back. And then he's sticking that fanny up and back, stretching out these hamstrings, and then pulling from the hamstrings and glutes. This will also develop the muscles of the upper back. You know, a lot of, a lot of common mistakes. People might want to get in front of a mirror at home and might see themselves bend over with a rounded back, which is a little bit dangerous, and may keep their back flat and have their weights go away from their shins. You want to think about keeping those weights almost in contact with their shins all the way down. Good. Perfect. Okay, so that's a great exercise. Again, it's going to cross all the different joints and really help build the backside of that strength. Really important for high performance athletes or for all the rest of us that are facing the demands of life and just almost rolling you in. It's a great exercise to help develop the back of your body. Okay, Craig, we have one last exercise here in this session and we're going to do something really high tech. You're just going to use your body weight. What this is, I just went and grabbed a piece of paper. All you need is your carpet or a slick floor. You're going to use weight, huh? You're a strong person. You can demo without weight. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it without weight right now. What we're going to do is Craig's going to keep all his weight on this right side. He's going to really work the muscles again to find, finish off around this hip capsule to keep that knee outside. Good. He's going to lengthen it out and he's going to pull that right back in. Now as we keep that perfect posture, the hips are going to sit back and down. It's really going to fire from the inside of his quad and his glute. It's right here from the groin, fire the groin and the glute. And those two things working together are really important to help strengthen that knee and to strengthen that hip relationship. Great job, Craig. We'll do one more and rest. Craig, you did a great job. Thanks. We really appreciate you coming in and doing all the demonstrations. My pleasure. For level three and level four, we really learned that what we need to have is we need to have great mobility in the hips, great stability. We added in the elastic component, and we have to be really strong at everything we do. It's great to have you here. We really appreciate you joining us at Sports School, and we hope that this level four will improve your sports performance and decrease your injury potential. We look to seeing you next time in a future episode of Sports School.